Yes, this is a question on ungrouped data. Okay, and we are told that the table shows the marks obtained by students in a biology test. Now, we are to construct the frequency distribution table using the class interval 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29. If you continue, we are going to get 30 to 39, 40 to 49, and so on. So, let's go ahead with our first question there. I want to get a frequency distribution table okay so now i'll just do a rough sketch here and i will advise this is the best way to go about your work have the mark the tally and the frequency then for example we have been given the range zero to nine we need to find okay now we have nine that's the first nine we are seeing and there is no other one the frequency therefore is one okay then we have 10 to 19. We are going to be looking for all the places that we have numbers from 10 to 19. Second row, none. Third row, okay, we have 18. Um, okay, the fifth row, we have 15. Those are, that's two tallies. We have 16, that's another tally. Don't forget to tally your data. It will help you to actually map out what you need to get and not make mistake you need to be very careful now 20 to 29 we are going to look in the first row we have one this 25 that's one we have second row we have 20 that's two okay if we still continue the third row we have 21 that's three okay the fourth row we don't have any that's all so the frequency is three and the same thing we do for 30 to 39 you can see the way we actually go about doing this in the first row there is no 30 in the second row we have 39 a tally that's first one the third row we have 36 that makes it two okay we also have 32 that makes it three in the fourth row we have 37 that makes it four we also have 35 that makes it five and in five, we we'll cross over the four entries in our tally. Then we'll continue with six, 34, and that, those, that six. So like this, we just continue doing all this. We use the tally as a guide. And then when we're through, we get the frequency. Now, if you are working with your question paper, you need to be careful so that you make sure that you don't miss any of the entries. And as a rule of thumb, you need to check after you are true to confirm that the total frequencies that you got is going to be equal to the total number of data that you have been given and that's what we are going to be doing now okay so i'm speeding up the video so that you don't just get bored repeating the same thing over and over just to get the idea of how to do this and then we can check afterwards so here now we want to check now already we are seeing that we have um, 10 columns and 5 rows. That will be 10 times 5. That's 50. So all the entries, if you add all our frequencies, that should give us 50. So we have 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 6 plus 8 plus 12 plus 6 plus 3 plus 4 and plus 4. That's 50. So you need to check with this so that you can be on the right track. Now, checking, I know that now I'm on the right track. I can go ahead with the other equation, but I cannot emphasize this enough. Once you miss out on the on the number of entries, there's no way the question is going to be correct. Your solution will not be correct. But if you have checked and you have confirmed that all the entries are represented, you have your frequency as desired, you can now go to get the other questions done. Like here, we are told to draw a cumulative frequency curve for the distribution. That will be a curve in which we have on the x and the y axis, we have the cumulative frequency, okay? And then we are going to be using the class boundary and we are going to draw that graph, the cumulative frequency against the upper class boundary. So here, Already we have our mark, we have our tally, we have our frequency, but we need the cumulative frequency 
and we need the upper class boundary. So we get the cumulative frequency by adding um, sequential entries of the frequencies, just as I'm going to be doing right now. In the first case, we have just one. In the second case, we have one plus three is four. In the third case, that four we had to three to give seven. In the next case, we have seven plus three, seven plus six, thirteen. Then the next one, 13 plus 8 is 21. The next one, 21 plus 12 is 33. The next one, 33 plus 6 is 39. 39 plus 3 is 42. 42 plus 4 is 46. 46 plus 4 is 50. These are the cumulative frequency data that is needed for us to plot our graph. Then, the class boundary. To get the class boundary, take for example, the second range of marks. The 10 to 19. What we do is we subtract 0 0.5 from the first entry and we add 0 0.5 to the last entry. So normally the, that class boundary will be um, 10.5 to 19.5. But for what for us, what we need for our graph is the upper class boundary. So we are going to be taking the 9.5, 19.5, 29.5. 5, um, as our upper class boundary. The class boundary is from the lower class boundary to the upper class boundary, but we just need the upper class boundary. So for all of the entries, we just put in the value of the upper class boundary, 9.5, 19.5, 29.5, 39.5, and on down to 99.5. This is now our 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 cumulative frequency curve, the whole give. It's going to be a graph of the cumulative frequency plotted against the upper class boundary. Okay, so we can go ahead and see what we can do with respect to that. So now we are going to be plotting our cumulative frequency curve by plotting the cumulative frequency on the vertical axis, okay, and the upper class boundary on the horizontal axis. Now we are concerned about what scale do we need to use? Here we are having entries from 1 to 50. So our scale should be able to cater for that. And then the class boundary, we are having 9.5 to 99.5. If we look at the divisions on our graph and we have decided to append in units of 5, we can see 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. That caters for all the data entry that we have. So we can say five and um, two centimeters, that's the size of each of the tick boxes, should represent five units on the vertical axis. Now on the horizontal axis, we don't need to start from zero so that we can actually get a good view of the dot five that are reflecting there. If we just take it in steps of 10, starting from 9.5, here yeah, we have 69.5, 79.5, 89.5 and 99.5. You can also see that um, those incremental values amounts to us having all of the data represented on the graph also. So also on the horizontal axis, we can say the 2 centimeters is representing 9.5 units. But we can see at the beginning of the horizontal line, it was notched, meaning that it's not um, a linear it's not linear at the beginning at that point. We are not starting with 0 0.9.5, no. We are just starting from 9.5, then increments by 10 units, okay? So our scale is 2 centimeters represent 5 units on the cumulative frequency as is, and 2 centimeters represent 9.5 max on the upper class boundary as is. So we now need to plot this as appropriate. In the first case, we have one and 9.5. Since this is 5, each of the division will just be 1, 1, 1. Okay, up to 5. So this is 1 and this is 9.5. The point of intersection is being shown with that cross. So we just note it. This is the dot as 1 and 9.5. 4 and 19.5. Okay, this is 19.5 and 4 is just before 5. 29.5 and 7. We have 5, 6, 7. You can see this is the reason why actually we use in the value, the data value, 9.5, 19.5, so that we can just plot them off on the graph. If you have used 10, 
in 2030, we we'll need to have been looking for, okay, where is 9.5? And that will not give us the exact value. So this is the best way to go about. This is even the standard way that the cumulative frequency curve is plotted. So now we just mark off the subsequent values for cumulative frequency and the upper class boundary. Like here, we now have 69.5 and 39. 39 is just before 40, okay? Then 79.5 and 42. 42 will be two steps above 40. 89.5 and 46, just after 45. Then 99.5 and 50. 50 is the last entry. Now, having done this, all we need to do to get our cumulative frequency curve the OG is to join all the points together. I advise students, you can use a French curve or you can use a broomstick. I've also found that to be very useful. But since this is a digital workout, I'm just using my free hand to try as much as possible to make them link together. And this is now our cumulative frequency curve. The whole gift for the ungrouped data, which we grouped and we have now worked upon. And this is the graph for the data that we are given. Okay. So now we can go ahead to solve for the other questions that we have been asked. We are done with the first and the second question now. We can move ahead with the other questions, okay? So the other question were to use the graph to find the median mark for the students. So this is answer to A, this is answer to B. So C and C1. To be precise, we want to find the median mark, okay? The median mark in the test. The median will have to be, now the cumulative frequency is 50. The median will have to be half of the total frequency. And that is half of 50, that is 25. So what we need to do to use the graph to find the median is to go to the 25th entry, which is half of 50, and trace it to the graph, okay? Just as being shown. And then we trace that down to the class boundary. And the entry that is there is what is going to give us the median mark. Now, looking at this, we have 49.5. The next one, because there are incrementals in two, will be 51.5. And the next one after that will be 53.5. The mark we are looking for is in between those two. And that will amount to 52.5. So, the median mark as obtained from the graph is 52.5 marks. Out of all the marks that are scored by the students in the biology test, the median mark is 52.5 marks. So finally, we are also asked from the question that we are to find the percentage of students. Now notice this is not marks. We are to find the percentage of students that scored at least 66 marks. Okay? Now, we are told at least 66 marks. So that is giving us the mandate to go to our mark that's on the horizontal line and we are to find out where 60, 66 is falling. Okay? Now, we've explained the division already. So 66 is coming here on the point being shown in green and we trace it to the cumulative frequency as is. And then that is at least 66. You know the highest mark that we have is 99.5. So the range that's been shown in green, and it's just been shaded in green, is the range of students that scored at least 66 marks. That means the least is 66. They can score 67, 68, 69, 80, 85, 90, 95, 99. But 66 is the least. So it is this range of students that we are trying to look for. So the on the on the horizontal as is the shaded area correspond to the marks that are at least 66. Okay. Then the number of students is going to be reflected on the cumulative frequency as is. That's the frequency range for students that score at least 66. And that will be 50 minus the lower boundary is 38. That is 12. Okay. So that frequency range is 12. We are asked to find the percentage of students that scored at least 66. So that will be 12 over the total student, which is 50 multiplied by 100%. So if we cut, 
if you amount to 24%. So 24% of the students scored at least 66 marks. And with that, we are done with our question on the cumulative frequency graph.